A judge denying Morgan Geyser's request for conditional release. Brett Lemoyne is live with what this means for Geyser's chances of release in the future. Welcome to Crime Chronicles, where we dive deep into the most chilling and notorious cases. In today's video, we're revisiting the infamous Slenderman stabbing, an internet-fueled crime that shocked the world. As one of the key figures in this haunting case, Morgan Geyser, petitions for a release from a psychiatric hospital, will explore the case's origins, the horrifying details, and the ongoing debate between justice and mental health. Stay tuned as we uncover the story behind one of the darkest corners of the internet. Of all the cases falling under the rubric of true crime and internet folklore, few have seized the public imagination as tenaciously as the notorious Slenderman stabbing. Now, the application of one of these two teenage girls, Morgan Geyser, for discharge from a psychiatric hospital once more, raises debates about mental health, justice, and internet influence on young minds. But first, let's go back a bit into the case's origins, how it unraveled and the chilling details that kept the story alive in the public consciousness for almost a decade. Slender Man is a character created from the darkest corners of the internet, namely the 2009 forum Something Awful by Eric Knudsen. The character should personify fear. A tall figure with a faceless, unnaturally long-limbed body, Slender Man was said to stalk children and lure them into his dark world. With time, Slender Man became some kind of modern urban legend. While fan fiction was blossoming in great multiplicity on different platforms, along with videos and images including creepypasta. While he might be scary, Slender Man is purely a product of fiction. The line between reality and imagination became blurred when two girls in Waukesha, Wisconsin, in 2014, conceived that they needed to kill a friend to appease this creature. A depraved crime befell the quaint town of Waukesha on May 31st, 2014. Two 12-year-old girls, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire, lured their friend Peyton Leutner into the woods after a sleepover. They had planned to kill Leutner as a sacrifice to Slender Man, so they believed, in this way, they would appease him and admit them to his mansion deep in the woods. Instead, what is still amazing is the fact that Morgan Geyser stabbed Peyton 19 times, while Nisa Wire urged her to do such a bad thing. The most amazing thing that can be believed about this case is how indifferent the girls were since their belief in Slender Man was real. They had planned the attack by bringing the knife with them and waited for the opportune moment. Miraculously, Peyton Leutner survived the attack. Left for dead, she managed to crawl into a nearby path where a bicyclist found her and called for assistance. She was taken to the hospital, where eventually she markedly changed her condition of near-fatal wounds to recovery. The crime was one that sent shockwaves throughout the nation, as so many went into disbelief with regard to how two young girls could commit such a heinous act. In the process of investigation and its aftermath, police arrested Morgan Geyser and Anissa Wire later charging both with attempted first-degree homicide. As the case unfolded, it would become apparent that mental health would feature prominently in their defense. Morgan Geyser, for instance, was diagnosed with schizophrenia, a condition not only rare but one that is rare to manifest in someone that young. Her lawyers argued her delusions about Slender Man had been part of a big psychotic disorder that served to distort her perception of reality. Anissa Wire was committed as a second-degree attempted homicide and in 2017 got sentenced to 25 years for being committed to a mental health facility. Anissa's lawyers were able to reduce the sentence. She was released in 2021 for strict supervision. Morgan Geyser was found not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect and up to 40 years into the state mental institution. Come 2024, and almost a decade later, Morgan Geyser was again in the news when she petitioned for her release from the psychiatric hospital. At 22 years, she has spent nearly half of her life confined within a state institution with treatment for mental illness. Actually, this is not the first time Geyser would be filing for release. She did so in 2022 based on her progress with treatment and said she was no longer a danger to society, which the court also denied on the ground that she was still dangerous to herself and others. Geyser's latest bid for freedom has raised questions over whether justice has truly been served. Her lawyers say she has made great improvement in learning to control her schizophrenia and can be slowly returned to supervised life in the community. They point to her non-violent nature over the past few years and her consistency with treatment. On the other hand, prosecutors and much of the public are more concerned about releasing a murderer, even as an outpatient who could have committed such a heinous crime so young. They feel that though Geyser is stable today, mental illness is, is unstable and the possibility of her ever being dangerous again should not be taken lightly. 
The Morgan Geyser case presents deep questions about juvenile criminal justice, especially when a mentally ill juvenile conducts a crime. Should a geyser continue being incarcerated or the focus of rehabilitation with a hope toward eventual release into society? But one of the main issues at the heart of this debate is the nature of schizophrenia. It is a chronic condition for which treatment can help manage symptoms but is not curative. A number believe that because of the possibility of a relapse, it is too much of a risk to allow Geyser out, even with supervision. Others believe she has served long enough in prison for a crime she committed when she was 12 and at least deserves a shot at life. The case also brings out the bigger aspect of how the internet can affect the fragile minds of young children. The Slender Man stabbing gave a wake-up call to many parents, teachers, and law enforcement officials about the danger lurking online. Most children may sift between fiction and reality, but those afflicted with mental health issues might not be in a position to do so, and that could lead to tragedies like the one that occurred in Wukasha. With Morgan Geyser again asking for her release from the psychiatric hospital, the public was faced with a tough decision on a very complex emotional case. On one hand, justice must be seen to prevail for Peyton Leutner, who nearly lost her life at the hands of her friends. On the other hand, there is recognition that Geyser was a child at the time of her committing the crime while suffering under a grave mental illness. Whatever the court's decision may be, the case of the Slender Man stabbing will continue to haunt all parties involved and will serve as a grim reminder of both the dark side of the internet and how labyrinthine mental health can be when it surfaces in criminal justice. That's it for today's episode of Crime Chronicles. What are your thoughts on Morgan Geyser's plea for release? Should she be granted freedom after nearly a decade of treatment? Or is the risk still too high? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update on the latest crime stories. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe.